good afternoon. Uh, so my last prac was um, a hospital placement um, in a general medicine ward. Um, and the person that I've chosen to do my case study on um, was at, at this time, at the beginning of my prep, was probably the patient that I had the most contact with um, and I was sort of expected um, to play the real occupational therapist um, role and sort of my supervisor was stepping back from, from that point on. So the person I've chosen is Mrs P. Um, Mrs P is a 70-year-old, 70 78-year-old uh, lady who was from home. Um, she lives at home alone. Uh, she's single. Um, she's retired. Uh, she has underlying conditions of osteoarthritis and cardiopulmonary disease. Um, she also is a very keen gardener and she's quite active. Um, she also loves cats um, and was previously independent with all her ADLs and mobility um, with no frame. Um, so Mrs P was admitted um, to the hospital on the 1st of November. Um, she was admitted by ambulance from a neighbour that had called the ambulance um, after finding Mrs P uh, in the lounge room with the front door wide open. So she was firstly um, admitted with the diagnosis of falls query infection. Um, so over the, the next week, um, we kept monitoring Mrs P um, and she presented very confused, very, very drowsy. Um, she was actually rested in bed for five to seven days, I think it was. Um, so we looked at, firstly, getting her a pressure cushion for a high back chair, and we were encouraging um, the nurses to uh, get her out of the bed for meals. Um, and so I guess with Mrs P, the first question um, I sort of posed in her case was when she was more alert, um, we could kind of see that cognitively we're not quite sure where she was at. So my first question was, okay, well, what do we need to know first of all and how are we going to assess it? Um, so in terms of cognition, um, I decided to do an MMSC on Mrs P when she was more alert. Um, she scored 16 out of 30. So that's quite a significant cognitive impairment, especially when her file showed a previous MMSC um, from the previous year with a score of 21 over 30. Um, so that was my first cognitive assessment. Um, and then I also did a functional assessment with my supervisor. Now, Mrs P was my first shower assessment as well, but I guess I wanted to have a look at, um, because she was showering at home and not, and not receiving any, any help services, I wanted to see how she would manage. Um, so in the shower assessment, it was actually quite surprising. Um, Mrs P, from a functional level, was quite unsteady on her feet. Um, she seemed like quite a falls risk. Um, she refused to use the shower chair because she just has the rails set up at home. She felt more comfortable that way. So we did the shower assessment with her standing and both my supervisor and myself in there. Um, from that assessment, I took that um, Mrs P was um, very poor initiation of uh, movement and she also had poor initiation, um, I'm sorry, for carrying out of the tasks as well. Um, for example, her memory was quite poor in that uh, she would ask me where the taps were and after showing her a couple of times, uh, she would go to turn around, to turn on the taps, but get all the way around and actually forget what she had turned around for. So after the shower assessment, I wrote up both notes um, for the cognitive um, and the functional review. Um, at this point, Mrs P was not safe for discharge from an OT point of view. Um, we worked through with my supervisor um, sort of what deficits and, and what, what the next stage could be. Um, and I actually attended my first family meeting um, with Mrs P's family. 
which leads me to my next question. Um, so in the family meeting, um, the social worker was present, my supervisor, myself, um, the patient's daughter and the daughter's husband. Now, the daughter expressed her need for um, wanting the patient to essentially go into a nursing home. She wasn't comfortable having her at home alone anymore um, and she wasn't able to provide enough family support for the patient to live at home. Um, so things were discussed around, okay, well, what needs to happen? You know, the patient, first of all, needs to agree to go into a nursing home. And um, the patient's daughter was actually adamant that, no, she would she would <laughs> refuse and she would pretty much never go into a nursing home. Um, so what happened was the social worker started to talk about guardianship and administration. Now, this is my second question in that I actually hadn't had much experience at all with this. So it was about, you know, for me, well, what does this actually mean for a person? And it was also a big learning curve because, you know, for me, it was like, well, what, how does that make me feel? And if that was me, I couldn't, I couldn't sort of help put myself in that situation and feel, well, what if that was me? Um... So guardianship and administration um, means that uh, it's usually given to a family member and it means that the patient no longer has capacity to make decisions regarding their well-being and their finances. So in terms of Mrs P's case, it was sort of proving that she didn't have capacity to make her own decisions so that the daughter then could have guardianship and administration and use the patient's finances to put her, um, place her in a nursing home. Um, so that that was discussed and um, I sort of had a debrief and gathered more information um, with my supervisor and also the social worker um, just regarding, you know, the process um, and what needs to happen. And from that, from an OT point of view, um, so we need to do a further in-depth cognitive assessment um, but ultimately the doctors will make the decision on whether or not the patient has capacity. Um, so I then conducted a Cognostat with Mrs P. She actually scored quite well. Her, her infection um, was improving um, and I guess with that so was her cognition. Um, she scored, it was three sections in average age range. The ones that were scored, there was two scored in um, severe um, cognitive impairment and that was for memory and constructability. Um, with, with these results, um, I wrote up in the patient notes um, and also gave the doctors the Cognostat to have a look at. They actually made the decision that Mrs P was actually capable um, of making her own decisions and um, the social worker tried every sort of way of asking and promoting nursing homes but Mrs P uh, refused, uh, declined. Um, so that kind of put a spanner in the works in terms of what the family wants and what the patient wants and then we're kind of stuck in the middle in that well, where is she going to go. So they were my main sort of um, moments and, and questions to be asked around Mrs P's case. Um, I'll just let you know the outcome. Mrs P actually improved quite a lot, especially um, well, both functionally and cognitively. I actually reassessed um, her shower. Um, she was like a whole different person, very steady on her feet. Um, her motor planning was very good. Her sequencing was very good. She was able to independently transfer, um, independently ambulate with no aids, um, independently manage taps, dress herself, wash her feet, her back, even her hair. Um, so that, that was a great improvement to see. Um, Mrs P also um, yeah, was improving cognitively. Um, her orientation and general day-to-day -day, um, language was also improved. And the family actually uh, sort of agreed with Mrs P um, 
to be able to be discharged home when medically appropriate and to have the increase of services. So she will have people to come over and cook meals. Um, the social worker was looking at Silver Chain to come and do that, um, as well as ADL assistance, such as showering assistance, assistance three times um, a week and cleaning assistance as well. Um, and so I guess the family just really wanted those increase in services because they were really worried. Um, and that's, I guess, just a really great outcome. And I guess also Mrs. B, she's such a typical gen med patient. Um, quite typically over the last seven weeks, I've seen, um, you know, the age range between about 60 and, and 100 really, um, that will present with uh, confusion or falls or um, infection or multiple of things really. Um, but I guess it's just working through that process um, and, and sort of, I guess one of the main learning curves with this patient, Mrs P, was that um, you just have to give the patient time as well. And that can sometimes be really hard in such a busy acute hospital because I know the doctors wanted to discharge a lot earlier than, than we were sort of ready to or, you know, then we had we had to get all the services in place um, and talk to the social worker about getting those services in place. Um, and so I guess it's about really considering the person and, and what's best for them and given their age as well. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed watching my videos and I am just really, really excited to start my profession as an occupational therapist. So thank you.